Hello, hello, hello. I am so very, very sorry. We had some severe technical problems this morning. My cat stepped on my phone and somehow turned off the auto rotate feature. So when I tried to start my video on time, my screen was crooked. The picture was crooked, so I uh, was unable to go live on time. I'm sorry about that. Um, but I'm here, finally. Happy Saturday. Glad you guys could join me. Please say hello so I know who's here. Today is Stamp with Shell, and we are doing another What Inspired Me This Week. And I have two fun fold cards for you today, as well as um, another project that inspired me. My name is Shell Anderson. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I blog at shellscreativecorner.blogspot.com. I am also on Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, you can reach me by phone or email at any time. Welcome, 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 everyone. We have a couple orders of business before we get started. Um, if you saw my blog post or my Facebook post yesterday, you heard all about the um, new Stampin' Up! Basic White products. Unfortunately, the um, paper mill that manufactures our Whisper White products um, has been severely affected by the COVID and they have been forced to close. So we have a new paper mill and they are going to be producing basic white products for us. And if you check my blog post from yesterday, you will see a quick video that will explain all about the new paper coming. Okay. And as usual, I am sharing all the cards that I receive in the mail and yesterday I received this beautiful Christmas card using the poinsettia petals bundle from my friends Pam and Howard. So I thought I would share that beautiful card today. And my last video I forgot my tip so I am wanted to make sure that I gave you a tip today. This is tip number eight for your tip book. Before re-inking your Versamark pad, that's your clear ink pad, just take a paper towel and blot your the surface of your of your Versamark pad and it'll remove any dark stains that are left from stamps that haven't been cleaned. If you know what I mean. I'm just gonna grab my pad here. I don't know how awful mine is right now mine's not too bad but you can see there's some little marks there but sometimes your your pad gets really really gross just blot it with a paper towel before you re-ink it and it will remove most of those stains all right on to the fun stuff we are going to do three projects today and hopefully i'll have time to get to them all but we are going to go right off the hop and we are going to make our first project. And our first project <coughs> is not this one. Ha ha. Our first project is a bendy card. That is what inspired me this week. I've seen lots and lots of these bendy cards and as always if you want the instructions texted to you after the video just send me a text and I will shoot it off to you. Okay so we are going to have a colored base for our card. I have chosen granny apple green and that's five and a half by four and a quarter. Next up is a piece of DSP, and I have chosen the fabulous Celebration 
freebie that's coming in January. This is the Flower and Field Designer Series paper. And I will just give you a quick sneak peek at all this gorgeousness. Okay. So I chose this pattern for this card. So what we're going to do is we are going to glue this DSP right down to our card base. And I'm putting lots and lots of Tombow on here because this piece is going to fold after we get it put together. So we want to make sure that it's adhered very, very well. And I'm just centering that up on the background piece. There we go. All right, we'll just give that a minute and give it a back rub while I grab my scoreboard. All right. So on our Simply Scored, <clears throat> we are going to put the card base down backwards the DSP side down okay and now we are going to score this in half this is five and a half so half of that is going to be two and three quarters and just take your time because you're you're going through DSP plus cardstock and you want a nice fold in there all right now we're going to fold it on the score line. See why we wanted all that. Make sure that you have this straight, okay? You're with me so far? So basically there is a little book, okay? You see what that looks like? So far, so good. Let's get this scoreboard out of the way. All right. So now we have our art panel. I've got Whisper White and it is five by three and one quarter. And I've scored it at the half inch mark and at the four and a quarter inch mark. Okay. Now I am going to bring in my Stamparatus and we are going to pop this in place. I'm actually going to use two magnets this time and I have chosen a new stamp set for this card. And it is the beautiful art gallery stamp set. And it's got some fabulous floral images. And they're like a watery, um, kind of an artsy fartsy, is what I call it, um, image. They're, kind, they're not solid images per se. And I am just going to pop this down like so. And I did a trial run on this earlier because I wanted to see how it would turn out. I kind of had an idea. I hope I'm all in the camera here. Just get a peek here, make sure I'm in camera range. Okay. So what I did is I took a crushed curry marker and I took the brush tip. And in the middle area, I know this is going to be hard for you to see because this is photopolymer. But in the middle area of the big flowers, I just scribbled on some color and stamped it down. Okay. Okay. 
I'm just going to do that again because I want some nice yellow in the middle. And because these stamps are photopolymer, they're going to stick because I don't have ink on all areas, but that's okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I am going to take a stamp and spot and it's a real red stamp and spot and I am applying red ink to these flowers and like I said they're not solid oops I see I got a little bit of red there we'll take that off they're not there's blank spaces in this stamp intentionally okay so now I'm going to take granny apple green and I'm going to do this leaf and stems we're going to have to stamp this down a couple of times not too bad all right now I'm going to bring in the granny apple green marker and these little stems up here I'm just going to color them in a little bit and I'll just throw some more on that leaf because I can all right that should do it for the green and now I want to do this image I can't remember what color I was gonna do I think it was flirty flamingo it's gonna be flirty flamingo this time so I'm just gonna color over the edges of those little flowers and stamp it down. There we go. All right, so now I'm just going to take the fine tip of my granny apple green and just where there's a little bit of blank space there, I am going to. connect the dots so to speak and like I said this is kind of an artsy fartsy image so I'm not too too terribly concerned and I just want to clean this stamp um, before it gets too terribly stained we're always going to have some staining on these photopolymer stamps but There we go. Now, if I had my chamois, all right. There is my artsy fartsy image. Now we can get back to our card. And I'll move this out of the way. Okay, so we have this piece. Now we're going to take these edges and we are going to fold those backwards, okay? And we're going to burnish those, those score lines. Now I saw all kinds of these cards on Pinterest. Um, and there was, there's many, many different ways to do this. Um, It, they just I've never made one of these before and I thought you know I'm just gonna take the basic concept and 
go with it and I just wanted the only thing I wanted to do is I wanted to use new products so that you guys could see some of these new products all right so now we have our tear and tape on there we are going to remove these backings okay pretty simple so far all right now we're going to lay this back down flat and the trick is we're going to put this image centered so as best as we can oh i did something wrong <gasps> i have to put those tapes back on i almost royally goofed our card would not have worked All right, I'm putting the tapes back on for a moment. Sorry about that, ladies. We need to score this. So we're bringing back in our scoreboard. We'd have had a bendy card that wouldn't bend right. All right, now we're bringing this back in and we are scoring this in half. So we are scoring this at two and one half and the reason why I didn't score it before is because when we stamped the image if it had been scored it wouldn't have stamped nice okay so we're going to score this down the middle at two and a half all right sorry about that we almost made a big boo-boo <clears throat> okay so because this one folds this way, this one is going to fold this way. Okay, so we're going to have a tunnel effect. So now we're going to lay this flat. Make sure your DSP is going in the right direction. You don't want to put this on upside down. That would be something that I would do. All right, remove those backings yet again. And now we are going to center this. So this line here is going to line up with that line and we're going to try to have it right bang on. Just make sure your top and your bottom areas here and here are pretty close and press that in place. Okay, so this is what we have. Are you with me? Now we're going to put our bendy part on. This is one inch by six inch and I've scored it at a half inch from each end. Okay. So basically this is going to get glued on here. like so. So I'm going to use tear and tape again. You can use tear and tape. You can use Tombow. Tombow will take a moment to set up. So I just want to burnish those nice and flat. And before I put this on, I'm going to put my greeting on. And if you remember, the new, um, I don't even know what it's called again, many messages set. Remember I stamped all those and put them in a little container. I just pulled this greeting out of the container, okay? And this greeting says, your kindness means more than you could ever imagine. So we're just going to put the greeting on first before we put this on the card. And we're just going to center this as best we can like so and we'll just give that a second to set up that's pretty good all right so we're going to do one side of this at a time so we are going to we've removed the little backing and we're going to fit this right down in the corner 
here and then we're going to remove this backing and we are going to put this in this corner here and then you can just give it a little help so there's your top view and there's your bottom view okay so that is your bendy card all right it's kind of hard to put it on camera and then again if you need those instructions you can let me know after the video so that is with the art gallery um, stamp set that's coming in the new catalog all right we are going to clean up our workspace and we are going to move on to another project <clears throat> As soon as I find my desk here. <clears throat> All right. Next project is called a cascading trifold card. Now, this one, um, I was inspired by Patty Bennett. She has done um, a couple of different ones. Um, I wanted to try something different. She did hers with 12 by 12 cardstock. Okay. And not all of us have 12 by 12 cardstock. So I wanted to figure out how to make the same type of card using eight and a half by 11. Okay, so I've managed to do it. It's called a cascading trifold card. So you're going to need an eight and a half by 10 and a half sheet of cardstock. All right, and now this looks pretty crazy here, but I'm going to go through the concept and then we're going to do it together. It's not difficult. This one sheet of cardstock is going to make you four cards. So you have eight and a half by ten and a half, okay? And you're going to score it. These red lines are scoring. This is three and three quarters, and this is seven inches. All right. So we've done our scoring on these lines. And then you take this and you're going to cut it in half at four and a quarter. This black line is a cut line. Okay. So that would give you two halves. And then you're going to measure up an inch here and down an inch here. And then these green lines, you're going to cut them. All right. So basically, this is what you would get. All right. Each one of those triangles. So we're going to do that together. I just need to get a sheet of cardstock and paper trimmer. It's much easier to figure it out if you actually see it done in front of you. I want to make sure I stand up here and make sure my trimmer is in the camera view. Okay. All right. So this needs to be 10 and a half by eight and a half to start with. So we're going to cut off half an inch. Like so. All right. So now we are going to score it first. So we're going to take this blade out of the way and we are going to score this at three and three quarters. Right there. So score it there and then we're going to move this over and we're going to score it at seven. All right. So we've got that now we're going to flip it and we're going to cut so we'll move that scoring blade up and this is going to be cut in half this is eight and a half wide so we're going to cut it at four and a quarter all right so there are our two pieces 
if you look at this template, there's the score lines, there's the cut line, okay? All right, I'm just gonna move one of these out of the way and we're gonna bring in our ruler and a pencil. And we are going to measure down um, half an inch. I did half an inch because this is smaller than what her card base was with a 12 inch. She did one inch. I'm doing half an inch. So I measured half an inch there. And half an inch there. Okay. So half an inch down, half an inch up. Now I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to put those dots right in my cutting track like so and now we are going to cut okay so now we have two of these and with this other piece we'll do the same i'm not going to do it today because you don't need to see me cut extras so basically this piece here is going to be our card now typically these bendy cards when they open they open this way all right so you have your card base typically a card base and then this piece opens this way off the card but you know me I like to be different and I like a challenge so I have done mine differently now we're going to start with our mat um card base four and a quarter by five and a half I was in my scrap bin and I chose Bermuda Bay and I'm going to mat mine with some poppy parade and the reason I'm doing that is because our card stock is smaller because we're using eight and a half by 11, or ten and a half by eight and a half so I thought I needed the mat in order to make it look right you'll see what I mean when we're done here so I am just simply going to adhere these two layers together like so and then I am going to bring in another new stamp set and this is the Woodland Wonder stamp set and this is super super cute I don't know whether you there's a lot of glare on that or not let me just pull this out so you can see the paper this is designed for the tall skinny cards this is the top of the tree this is the middle of the tree this is the bottom of the tree okay so it's a super super cute stamp set and i thought since i'm going to flip my card my trifold part of my card why don't i use this woodland wonder stamp set and we're going to make ours a tree so instead of having mine open this way all right I'm going to flip it this way. Strange, huh? <laughs> All right. So now we are going to get this into my stamp apparatus like so. And I am going to pull in the stamps for the tree. And just to give you a visual, the tree is going to come off the side. And this, since this is three pieces, I have to connect them. So I want a piece, I want this on this bottom piece, but I don't want it down so low that I'm not going to see any of the grass. So basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right here. 
and off to the side and the reason that I'm putting it off this way is so that we get as much as of this tree image on as we can. And there's those photopolymer stamps again sticking. I want to try to keep this as straight as I possibly can on that line. All right, I'm going to bring in my memento ink. And we are going to stamp this one. That's pretty good. I don't think we need to do any more than that. I don't want that. I want my chamois. There we go. We'll clean that off. And we will grab the next one. So now I'm just going to position this. Oh, here comes trouble behind me. I'm just going to position this. And you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm moving this over because of I don't want to bend my card base. All right. You cannot be on my table, cat. Come on. Come on. Down you go. All right. So now we are going to pick up the stamp. I don't need that part of it yet. And we are going to ink and stamp this down. So now we just have the top of our tree to stamp. So I'm just going to flip this upside down and turn my stamparatus. And that way I am not going to bend. Oops. It moved. There we go. I think we're all right. Okay. There is our image. Let's clean up our mess. Okay, close this up and bring this in. So, now that I've got that image on there, I am going to fold this. All right. So this is what we're going to see. Like so. All right, you see how I'm going here? And then you're going to be able to pull this tab down. Trouble, off you go. <laughs> Just like a kid, I'm telling you. Holy. All right, so we need to get this colored quickly. So let's grab some stamp and blends. And we will get it colored. This is Granny Apple Green that I have here. I need to switch to the other end or I am going to have a hot mess. So what's new with you ladies? Anything? Anything new and exciting? Hugs to Miss Molly. Yes, Miss Molly, she's been performing today, Carol. At one point we were having our morning coffee and we heard this weird noise and I thought, what is that cat doing? 
And here she was inside of one of those great big Walmart grocery bags that was hanging on the wall by the behind the door, you know, where I have my door hooks. Here she was inside the bag, playing inside this grocery bag that was hanging on the hooks. I have no idea how she got there. I know she didn't jump into it from below because she can't jump that high yet. But uh, yeah, she uh, was in the grocery bag having a heyday. Yes, Miss Molly's cute, but she's bad. She woke me up this morning at 5.30 wanting to play. She started by kissing my eyelids and then she uh, didn't give up until mom got out of bed. Alrighty. These little leaves are fussy. I can't color them real quick because they're so small. And I don't want to mess it all up. I think it's going to be a cute card when we're done. This is actually the first one I've done. I I didn't even do a sample. I just played with computer paper trying to figure out how to make this small enough to go on to eight and a half or sorry eight and a half by ten and a half paper so this is my first actual card so I don't want to mess it up and I do have another little image that I'm going to stamp on here and we'll do the grass green down here as well all right so now we need to have um, a light soft suede perhaps I don't know whether you can see my cat this is my cat's tail right here she's sitting here watching me color um, there's a little butterfly image and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to accentuate because once this card folds up, you don't see too much, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little butterfly. And you'll see here in a few minutes. As soon as I get this colored. I can go faster with the broader tip. But I just have to be careful in the smaller areas. There's a ton of little critters hanging out on this tree. We have a bird, a squirrel, another bird, a raccoon, and an owl. I'm surprised she's just sitting here watching and not trying to help me color. Oh, I have some news for you guys. Um, remember I told you that I didn't get a lot of my dyes in the pre-order because of they were delayed due to COVID? Well, guess what? They have arrived. So yeah, that's good. This is a cute stamp set. What are some of the greetings in here? Happy birthday. Congratulations. Hope your day stacks up to be one good thing on top of another. <laughs> that's cute. Um, hip hip hooray and yay and from all of us all right 
28. Now, what color is this? Light crumb cake. That'll work. Now I need some grays. All right, we'll use light smoky slate for our squirrel. Yeah, Molly's checking it out. Um, hi, Louise. Glad you could join. These are um, our Stampin' Blends. They're alcohol markers. They're comparable to a Copic marker. All right. So maybe a little saffron for the nest. And some mango for the beaks. And how about some gray granite for our owl? This is the dark one, not the light one. I think maybe I'll do the light one on his chest just to give him a little bit of oh actually that was the light one this is the dark one sorry about that all right now our little birds are really really tiny I am going to do something unprecedented I am going to grab my Bermuda bir No, you're not going in there. Scram. Sorry folks, my cat just walked across the uh, the keyboard. And now she's tearing the place apart. <laughs> okay. The joys of kittens. I am using a Bermuda Bay Stamp and Write marker. These are the die base markers on these little birds because I want to bring in the Bermuda Bay and I don't have a stamp and blend in that color. So these little birds are going to be done in die based ink. And as you can tell, they're not that ink is not near as nice to color with but because these images are small I think we can get away with it okay now I need another color for his eyes that's the dark so saffron and we need a little pink nose on our squirrel all right, so far so good. Now, this is gonna go like this. I wanna put some butterflies up here and I'm gonna make do the butterflies on this as well. <clears throat> and I just noticed something that I'm not real happy about because I use the Stampin' Blends and the way this folds, you see that you're gonna see that here, right? not so cool but I think I'll be able to fix that there's a little rabbit here and I am going to grab a piece of scrap and a block and I'm going to stamp this little bunny and I am going to color him and he is going to hide that mess Um, and I think he's going to be able to hide it. 
I never thought about the bleed through when I did this with Stampin' Blends. This guy is actually designed to poke out from the side of the tree, but we're going to have him poke out from behind the cord. There we go. Let's quickly cut him out and see if he's going to fix our problem. Maybe I should have made a sample, eh? And then I would have figured this out for myself and used my watercolor pencils. So just remember, take this into effect. If you make a card like this, if you use the Stampin' Blends on these cards, you're going to see them. So perhaps this would be an opportunity to dust off those watercolor pencils. Alright, just down between his ears. And we will be good. Alright. I'm just going to put that little guy right there and he's going to cover up that blob. Just like so. That's kind of cute. All right. So now I have that there. I am going to find a little butterfly. And now knowing what I know with the bleed through, I'm only going to put my butterflies on this top piece. So let me grab a foam mat and we will maybe one down here all right oh trouble is back I've heard of a parrot on my shoulder but now I have a kitten on my shoulder <laughs> all right now I am going to color some butterflies and I am going to bring in a Stampin' Write marker again because I want the super fine tip and I want to bring in the poppy to coordinate with The matte layer on this card. This is a super fine little area around these butterflies. I'm going to try the other end. Hopefully I don't mess it up too badly. I think I might be able to go faster. I know you guys don't need to sit here and be bored. Although I think Molly's keeping us entertained this morning. Hobby is off to Costco this morning to pick up his prescription. Hopefully they let him in and he doesn't have to wait in the crazy lineup. I don't know why he didn't have them delivered. You guys know that Costco has that option? They'll mail your prescription to you. He did that last time and it worked three days. He had his prescription in the mailbox. I couldn't believe it. I think I would choose that option over standing in line, especially at Costco on a Saturday morning. But 
I told him that while he was there, he might as well get me one of those delicious chickens. So there's that bonus. I'm sure they wouldn't have mailed me a chicken. <laughs> Hi, Donna. I'm glad you could join us. Welcome. Sorry, I'm having difficulty keeping up with the comments a little bit this morning because this is a lot of coloring that I'm doing. All right. See, that was a good choice with those butterflies because I, I didn't use the, the um, alcohol markers and they didn't bleed through. So that's a good thing. And I'm just going to pop, actually, I'm going to go with mango. Just to give them a little more color. And I used mango for the mat for my greeting. So I just kind of want to pull it all together. There we go. All right. So now we need to put adhesive on the back side of the top. All right. And this is just going to be matted. Just try to line it up there straight like so. All right. And then we'll fold it up and that little guy is going to peek out there. And we're going to bring in our bone folder. All right. And then I have, once again, some of those many messages. I just pulled one out. This one says, hoping your day is full of love, laughter, and joy. And I also have the happy birthday. So we are going to pop both of these on. That one right there. And I just wanted to keep this bright and happy and fun. So I chose Mango Melody for the matte layer. All right, so not your typical cascading trifold. And this one is made with the standard size paper. It's not 12 by 12. Okay, so there's that card. And look at the mess that I have here. Holy moly. I am just going to grab a bucket to put all this mess in so you guys don't have to wait until I get that all put away. I will just put that down there. All right, so that's two for three. <laughs> yes, who doesn't love Costco chicken? It is the best, or I think it is. All right, I just want to put that stamp away so I don't lose it, because that's been known to happen. And I will bring in our third and final project. And as my Saturdays are what inspired me this week, I've just shown you two projects that other people have made that inspired me. The thing, the third thing that inspired me this week is junk mail. We all get it. Did you guys get this in the mail today or this week? I get this crap all the time. I've never, ever had a loan from one of these high interest lenders, but they send me saying, here's $15,000. Just come sign your life away. Anyway, this was in my mail today or this week. 
and I kept it because this was my inspiration for my third project. This was them offering to give me money, but it was also Christmas themed, holiday spending. And on the front were two polar bears, which was the first thing that caught my eye. And the second thing that caught my eye was the fact that it was gorgeous grape and poppy parade. And I thought, what? Who would put those colors together? Well, let me tell you, we're going to do it today, ladies. And because I can, I am using a retired product. I'm using a greeting from this 2015 stamp set called Happy Scenes because I wanted the greeting that said, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. So you'll have to forgive me for using something retired, but it, you guys have tons and tons of stamps that you can play with. All right, I also used the Home Together dies. Okay, the one with the little houses in the holiday catalog. That was another thing I used. So in that junk mail, I cut out a piece of this poppy parade that had snowflakes on it. And then I cut out these two little polar bears. And you'll notice that this guy, there was a little sign here about get $15,000 today. He's a little wonky, so we're going to have to be creative when we put this card together. So I went with the colors in the paper. This is gorgeous grape, and it's eight and a half by five and a half, and we're scoring that at four and a quarter. And then for my background, I have used Whisper White, and it is four by five and a half. Sorry, <laughs> eight and a half by five and a half, four by five and a quarter. Okay, so we are going to create a background using my junk mail. And I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but it inspired me. So we're going to try and see what happens. All right. So that piece of poppy parade junk mail is now our sky. And I have cut out some of the little trees from some scrap shaded spruce from that die set. And then there's my greeting. I did that in the gorgeous grape. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And I have a gorgeous grape mat. You work for Costco, Donna. How cool is that? <laughs> well, you make good chicken. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So we have a greeting. So then I cut a bunch of snow banks with that same die set. And I thought, you know, if I put a few of these up here, like so. It's going to cover my seam and it's going to give me room to tuck some trees in there in the background. So we are just going to put some adhesive on here and start gluing some of these on willy nilly and see what we come up with. Alright, we'll do that and then we'll snip this piece off. And perhaps we'll use this piece. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Maybe I should have done it in behind. Anyhow, that's how we're going to do it. I'm just going to trim some of that off. And we'll just keep gluing these little pieces on. <laughs> Why 
Where are you located, Donna? All right. I think we're going to go this way. Yep, we are. I want some softly rolling hills of snow back here, but not too, too many. I'm not doing the whole sheet. I just want a few hills. So I'm going to put some adhesive back here. All right, we'll trim these edges off. And of course, I just glued that to my desktop. All right, now we need some trees in here. Northern California, lucky you. Nice weather in California. We're in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Central Canada. And this is, in the winter time, one of the coldest places I've ever encountered. <laughs> All right. And I'm just popping these trees here and there so that we have a little background scene. And maybe one more because we've already got it. And I use my new baby boss to cut these out. There we go. All right, so we have some trees. So I have one more snow bank and I'm going to pop that on here because we have it. And then I'm going to grab my Wink of Stella and we are going to add a little sparkle to our snow. I'm just going to go along the edges of these snow banks and add some sparkle here and there because I can just add sparkle here and there and everywhere. Sparkle makes everything better. All right. Not too bad for junk mail. Now let's bring in the boys. And this is my thought that I'm going to have to make one, yeah, see, I'm going to have to make one go over the other to cover up his missing parts. Isn't it funny some of the weird things that inspire us? I know I've, I've seen other people who've had inspiration from an ad in a magazine. And, of course, this one had to be weird. It was junk mail. Alright, I like the 3D effect. With those trees in the background. And then I am going to put this centered in at the bottom to cover up their feet a little bit because it kind of looks a little funny to me there. And I don't know whether I should have done this flat or not, but I did. And we'll just pop that on there. All right, perhaps we'll add some dimensionals to the back side. All right, 
create my tool here and we'll remove those backings. And we will get this card completed. There you go. Now we need to have a little bling bling. You know what? I just thought of something. This would be a perfect card for, if I can find them, the snowflake embellishments. That will add sparkle. And did you know that these are two different colors? There's two sheets here. And these ones have more like pink and gold tones. And these ones are like a whole bunch of different. There's some purples in here. So I am going to go with it. And I have one stuck to my finger, not my pick tool. All right. Let's just batter some of these around. Maybe if I use the other end of my pick tool, it would be easier. Oh, much. See how that one has a little purple tinge? I think that's good. What do you think? All right, there is our junk mail card. Inspiration from junk mail this week. And then we have our cascading trifold, which I did crooked. Hello, Miss Molly, you're back. Okay. And then our final card, if I can find it, I've got it buried here. Where did I put it? Is our bendy card. Miss Molly, Miss Molly. Oh, it's behind you. All right. And here is our bendy card. Okay. So that's the three cards we had for today. Thanks, Pam. I hope you enjoyed the Stamp with Shell, What Inspired Me This Week. I'll be back on Tuesday night at 7 and Thursday night at 7 for my regular Facebook Lives. Um, I ask that you guys find me over on YouTube. Um, if you pop over to, to YouTube, and I am Shelly Anderson on YouTube. And subscribe to my posts and click the notification bell. Because on Tuesday nights, I pre-tape and it goes as a live YouTube premiere. But I'm in the chat so that we can chit-chat and have a good time on Tuesday night. I will also post the link on Facebook so you can, you can also... Um, click the link on Facebook on Tuesday night at seven and that's central time. Okay. All right. Bye bye for now, guys. I, uh, thanks so much for coming. I, I really enjoy our times together and, uh, everybody stay safe and I really hope to see y'all in person soon. Bye bye for now.